Okay, guys, welcome to this edition of uh, White and Black Love. Today we have Justin and Khadija. They are a couple. They're teenagers. And we want to start right off the rip. And first question is, um, do people often do a double take when they see you two hold hands or kiss in public? Yeah. They really did. <laughs> they do? They, they did. Ooh. So what types of people? Is it black people, Both. Mexican white. people, white people? Mostly it's black and white people. Yeah. So which more is predominantly white people or black people? I get a lot of stares in the eyes from like black guys. They don't, I don't know if they like, don't like that I'm with her. They'll look at me and then they'll look at her. What do you think they're thinking? Why is she with him? Why is she with him? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And Khadija? Well... What do you notice? White people. Like There's more white people? Yeah. White males or white females? I think white older males and okay. females. Okay. There's definitely white people that stare a lot more, but like, I get like dirty looks from black guys. Okay. Black males. Okay, so Khadija, what do you think they're thinking? Why is he with someone that's not white? Okay. And Justin, how does that make you feel? You thinking or you feeling like you know what they're thinking, which is something negative. <laughs> I don't really have an opinion on it. I mean, I don't feel any kind of way. I just, they just look and I just go on with my day. Okay. Khadija, does it make you feel some kind of way? Well, I'm always quick to act on other people's staring problems, so. Yeah. Okay, how so? I do feel, I feel like, why are you looking? So, do you say something or you just... No, I just give them that eye like... Okay, I got you. Um, so, Justin, did any of your friends or family members, when you and Khadija first started dating, what was their reaction when they found out that she was black? My dad just said that she was real pretty and my mom said the same thing. What about other friends and family? Well, there wasn't like any... Most of my family doesn't know her. She... No, so you're keeping her from your family? No. I'm so bad. Like, the only time that we see my full family is on, like, like, holidays, and she's usually with you guys, and you guys don't let her, you know, because it's a family thing, so she's got to stay home. And my friends were fine with it because they're mixed like no okay so none of you have like racist friends or that or even joke and hint at what? most of my friends are my friends are like Hispanic and black and I, Martin's probably one of my only white friends so you're saying most of your friends are black black and Hispanic okay. the majority is Hispanic but there's more black than there are white and more Hispanic than there are white okay all right so Khadija did any of your friends mention anything when they found out you first when you first started dating Justin? Um, they were surprised. They were surprised that I was with someone white because they thought that I would be with someone that was black. Okay. And this was in high school, right? Yeah. Okay. And our job. Yeah, my job. They were surprised <laughs> to see me. Which job? Texas. Like I told people I had a boyfriend and then when he came to see me and we were going to swim together, they'd be like, oh, he's mine. Oh. Okay. But does that ever make you feel some kind of way? No. No? Okay. Um, so, what do you guys, society-wise, what do you think are some of the obstacles, if you guys remain a couple, that you guys will face? So, so in other words, you know, eventually you guys won't always be living home with parents. Yeah. You guys will end up moving out on your own 
and then there are other things come into play. You may have to start making life decisions. So what are some of the obstacles you guys see society-wise because society looks at you a certain way? I don't really see any obstacles because, like, I mean, if you're hired to a job and someone's racist, they're going to get fired. You can't keep someone from moving into an apartment from their skin color. You can't, like, not give them a bank account. Because it's against the law. Yeah, so I don't really see any. Yeah, but there are a lot of things. So you do know, so you guys are a little bit inexperienced, right? But you do know, so let's say with the job thing, right? Mm -hmm. Racism, things like that. You do know people get away with that, right? Yeah. In the real world. I know what the letter of the law says. I know what labor laws, discrimination laws, are the, you know, so on and so forth. But you have to prove those and yeah. people have to investigate. And, you know, it, 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 it's not as cut and dry in the real world as it is in the letter of I feel like, law. But I feel like where we are, like the Katy and Cypress area, there's like enough black people to where like white people can't really get away with being racist all the time. Okay, so what if your job was going to move you to a place where it could be a little racist? Like you saw what happened in Charlottesville, right? Yeah. So what if you move to a place where it's predominantly, or it's a small town, and it happens to be in the south, and it happens to be, you know, maybe older thinking, uh, Caucasian, white people. Well, I mean, all I can really do is just not really pay attention to things they say. Cause but, you could, but your life could be in danger, correct? Because I'm dating her? Well, because in that air, in a, you go, if you move into a certain area, your job wants you to go into yeah. a certain city, right? Where they don't really take to that idea just yet. I just wouldn't tell them. But they would see you in public together, though, eventually. You can't really hide it. You're gonna, what are you going to do, send her to the grocery store or you go to, to the grocery store? She's going to go to church to 8 o'clock service? You're going to go to church to 10 o'clock service? Mm -hmm. No, right? There might be a problem, but I mean, it's, you can't really control that. You can't really make people do what you want or make them stop being racist. So if it happens, it happens. Okay. But if it came to the point where she could be in danger? Then we would have Or to you could be in danger? I'm more worried about her than I am. Mean. Okay. We would have to move or call the cops or something. Or not move there. If you do your oh, homework. Oh, you're not saying move. like we're not there yet, but it's Yeah, if your job says, Hey, you gotta you gotta move to Vider, Texas. And we wouldn't go. Okay. Or Jasper, Texas or somewhere Are those or West Virginia. Or after it's like West Virginia. have a discussion with my job or something. Like or her have a discussion with her job, whichever one's moving us there. Okay. So how long have you guys been together? Almost four years. Almost four years? Mm -hmm. and, the, and you guys started seeing each other December when? Fourth. 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 Okay, so what relationship-wise, mm -hmm. what have been some of the issues that you guys have had? We don't agree on a lot of things. Yeah. So you disagree on a lot of things? Yeah. Okay, what type of things? As far as <clears throat> it could be anything, really. But what Just sort of things? Like if we want to go somewhere to eat, and she wants something, and I want something else. I mean, we eventually like compromise or just go to the place that either one of us go to. But it's just a lot of arguing sometimes. Okay. Um, so it seems like that's still going on. <laughs> is that not, not like it'll be like small little <coughs> disagreements it's not like arguments like when we were younger when we were like 16 okay. we would argue about everything and I was just like oh, you're doing this wrong and she'll take criticism or I'll take criticism and we'll try to make it better okay alright so um, you guys have overcome some challenges there are still some challenges. Relationships, there are always challenges. And when you get used to... Um, the only constant is the challenge, I guess, right? There are new hurdles. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I think the only difference is, is that when you get older, 
you start realizing that there's really no sense in arguing about something because one person wants this and the other person wants something else. So we figure out, okay, so what could we do that makes everybody happy? Or sometimes, hey, I'll go to eat where she wants to eat and then she'll say, I'll go eat where he wants to eat the next time. And, you know, back and forth. And um, I've heard that said even older couples where they realize there's really no need to argue in a bad way about things because in the end, you know, um, right now if you look back at when you guys first started dating, what you argued about, it may seem small or even stupid, right? But um, so when you guys decide to marry and start a family, right? How do you explain to the child, hey, you know, you're of mixed race. You're part um, Hispanic, part black, part white. Part or let me reverse the question. What if the, que what if the child comes home and said, hey, mommy, I saw that they, they, these people were in, in, enslaved yeah. in this country. Are, are these your people? Am I from those people? But I noticed that these other people were enslaving these people. Mm -hmm. Am I from those people? So how, how, how do you think you can explain that? I just let them learn in school. I mean, just... There's no real way for me to explain it because, you know, they're not my ancestors or... Well, your ancestors were a part of it, so I'm saying both sides. If he or she has questions, then we're going to have to answer them by what actually happened and just be like, but since then, things have changed, things, well, some things have changed, but. But if the, once they're old enough to understand, like, I'm not saying none of my family members were racist or like ancestors, so I don't know that for a fact, but we moved here after and like slavery. We weren't here. We moved here around like World War One or two. No, and so your family background is what? Like Irish. The okay. People who were like enslaving each other. So the Irish were. Um, I think discriminated discriminated against when they first got here. Yeah. But then, they got here. They became established. A lot of them got certain uh, positions of authority, police, this and the other. And then the Italians came over, and then they discriminated on the Italians, yeah. okay? So, I get what you're saying, but remember one thing. So, the African-American doesn't come from America. Yeah. The Caucasian man does not come from America. Yeah, the only people that were here were Indians. So, they yeah. come from Europe. So, just remember that it could be, you know, different people, different places yeah. coming from somewhere. Uh, but I do get uh, what you're saying. So your take is, Justin, that you would rather have that the school teach the child whatever they want to teach them. Not, Not you control the nurse. Hey, hey, they'll teach you this, but this is what I need to let you know. There will probably be... I mean, I, had, I didn't see too much growing up, like biased teachers or like people who were like, no, it's not so much the teachers. I was just talking to um, another colleague earlier today, and I was we were talking about Marcus Garvey, and in some history books, they totally discredit him, and they say he was jailed for tax evasion. He was a criminal, and uh, they don't know why the Jamaican people revere him. But the truth was, Marcus Garvey was born in St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica. Um, he grew up to want to unite the black people of the world. It wasn't only about America. And he got a lot of publicity. Matter of fact, there's something that you guys can look up called Garveyism. He created this very successful big freight company called the Black Star Line. So because he started to get big, America ended up getting him on tax evasion, which they feel, some people feel were trumped up charges. They incarcerated him for two years. They took his company, broke it up, sold it off, and they kept all the money. And then they deported him back to Jamaica. 
right? But his message was like, um, just to give an example, Palestine for the Jewish people, Germany for the Germans, um, Scotland for the Scotman, you know, things of that nature, Africa for the African. Uh, but it was more of not just uniting people in America, because remember, he's Jamaican born, black people all over the world. But you know, what I notice sometimes is some governments feel some figures have to be uh, silenced, right? To kind of pull the power from them, right? Um, so my thing is something like that, where I've looked at two and three history books of this man, and they all tell a slightly different story. Well, one was completely different, mm -hmm. saying he was a criminal and so on and so forth, right? So my question to you is, um, similar to what my father told me when I went and I uh, told him in third grade I was in Gifted and Talented mm -hmm. and they started talking about uh, Greek mythology and there was they talked about Zeus on Mount Olympus and how he was the god of gods right so when I presented that to my father he says okay but you know that that's fake there's only one god mm -hmm. I said yes and then he was fine with whatever I was learning in school because he knew that we we're studying mythology and he he made sure I saw it as that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of controls, you, you know what your child is thinking and if they're on the right track and if they're not on the right track, then you kind of remind them or you sit them down, right? And you say something. So which one do you think is better to your child brings you something and you say, hey, okay, let me sit you down and let me explain a few pointers as you're learning this in school. Or do you want him or her to just learn it in school or somewhere else? It's almost like sex education, right? Yeah. You, you want to talk to them about something. You don't want to leave it up to complete to someone else. Mm -hmm. I mean, it all depends if they can understand it. Yeah, like. Well, they're being taught in school so yeah, I get what you're saying. You're saying what's age appropriate. But if they're teaching this in school, mm -hmm. then obviously the state has a curriculum that would be age appropriate for that for that child that grade. Probably sit down and talk to him. Okay. And what do you think, Khadija, what do you think you would say to your child about history when it comes to uh, blacks here in America? And whites here in America. I would not say to them. I would just explain the events that went on that took place during that time period, and that as time went on, things slowly changed to what they are today, where races just live amongst each other equally. And some people don't think that they are equal to another race, but everyone is the same on the inside. Okay. So, um, okay, so your child comes home. Let's say it's a boy. He comes home. And, okay, what would you name a male child? Oh. Top of your head. Just so that I can name it in the question. <laughs> no. What are you name? Michael, okay. No. So Michael comes home Wait, and he says, uh, you call him Michael, and he says, no, dad, my name is Mike D-Boy, D-Boy Mike. And uh, what's up? <laughs> what up, my nigga? <laughs> right? Uh, we take his phone. <laughs> so how would you address something like that? He wants to identify with black. And the, the black culture. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and as long as he's not on that, I hate white people kind of stuff. No, no, he's not on that, but he's saying, he's, if he, if he wants, he's walking by the house, what up, my nigga? If he wants to talk <laughs> like that, if he's old, well, I mean, no, it's hard to have an opinion on he's that. 13. He's, he's 12, 13. Age. That's the thing, that's the thing, though. And, in her household, that's not really a curse word, so it's fine, and I feel like that would just be fine. With me. Well, it's not a curse word, but it's a, it's also a, a black household, right? Yeah. So that would be different, whereas if your mom was using that word 
at home, it could be perceived as racist if it were to be in front of someone who's not from the home, right? But if you had to write a book or a story about a white family who used the word nigger Did you really at home, just... that would, someone could easily describe that as some kind of racial yeah. mm -hmm. tone, right? Well, I mean, I'd probably sit him down and try to talk to him. Tell him I mean, that's not really the right way to go, I guess, is to, like, act like a thug. Because if he's, like, talking like that, that means he's probably hanging out with people who talk like that, and they're probably not the best people to hang around. Okay. So, Khadija, so your son, Michael, comes home, and... He says, um, "Mommy, I ad I identify with white. I don't I don't want to grow up to be as dark as you." You hit me. Or what if he's slightly brown and he 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 um, looks at Justin and says, "Hey, when I grow up, I want to be like you." And then he says, "What do you mean?" And then he points to his skin. You know, white. At what age am I going to turn white? That happens. Well, I would ask him, like, talk to him about why he feels like he doesn't want to acknowledge the side of him that is black. You just figure out the root of the problem. Okay. All right, so... Um, In a interracial um, relationship, you guys, do you find anything about her, Justin, that is hard to relate to as far as her ethnic background? Could be her hair, like maybe she wears weave, or she has to use a certain type of curling iron or straightening iron, or you know, extra gel. And it's not something you've ever seen your mom or anybody in your family use. It doesn't really bother me. Not at all? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything about her ethnic background that if you guys were to marry and get um, move in together, you would have to um, adjust to or we're, it may become a challenge? We're pretty much the same. I mean, I'm not really as tidy as she is, like clean. But I mean, nothing ethnic wise, just like probably keeping the house clean or doing the dishes more often would probably, that'd be it. Okay. So Khadija, if you were to marry Justin, move in together, start the next chapter of your life, mm -hmm. start living life as adults, um, what do you think would be some of the challenges as far as his background? his cultural background. Besides having his dad come and fall asleep <laughs> in a chair. Really? I don't think there would be any problems, really. Okay, so what if you guys get married and in 15 years after that, um, Kathy needs to move in with you for any type of reason. Justin's mom. That'd be fine. That'd be fine? Yeah. Would yeah. you be okay with that? With my mom? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay. So, um, anything you guys want to tell me about black and white love before we end the segment? It's just like any other love. It shouldn't be discriminated or like people shouldn't frown upon it. It's just two people who like each other. That's kind of it. I mean, it's no different than a white person, a white person, or a black person, a black person. Okay. So love is universal. Yeah. So, and it has no um, color, mm -mm. race, uh, I guess nowadays even gender, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and there was, um, Pascal wrote something that, um, um, the heart has its reasons, of which reason knows nothing. So basically meaning the heart wants what the heart wants. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And when a person wants something from their heart, then it might not be able to be explained. It's inexplicable sometimes, right? Uh, and you would think, okay, if you thought about it, then uh, you wouldn't go that route. Yeah, well, but the heart is what a person wanted to do in their heart. Mm -hmm. So I, I get what you're saying. And I kind of agree because I've seen people that I thought didn't belong together. And I, I'm not even talking about racial lines. I'm just talking about like, what in the hell does this person see in that person and why they're together? And they go through the motions, right? But again, the heart wants what it wants. Okay, thank you guys for joining us for this edition of Black and White Love. And um, see you next time.